Hey, what's happening, guys? It's Dean from Electronic Sounds. Stick around. Today, we're going to talk about using an iPad as a second monitor for your desktop or your laptop. Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. Okay, guys, so this isn't necessarily as much about what software to use as it is about why you might want to use your iPad as a second monitor. A friend of mine is using Air Display 3 to make this happen, and another friend of mine suggested Chrome Remote Desktop to make this happen, and this is a free app. The app that I found to make this happen is called Duet Display, and this did cost me $9.99. So far, it's working really well, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing with it. I'm not sure why it took me so long to attempt to use the iPad as a second monitor. I think maybe because I'm on a Windows system, and a lot of times the iPad and Windows um, compatibility can be a little screwy. Um, but I really appreciate the tip from my friend Ray and my friend Connor about getting this set up because it's, it's working seamless, you guys. So I've got the Duet app inside of the iPad, and I've got the Duet software installed in my PC, right? And we're going to plug the iPad into the PC with a really long light lightning to USB cable. This is like a five foot cable uh, from Anchor. If you're looking for long USB cables, these are awesome. The link is in the description. Um, and it's gonna, by default, try to open up, you know, my iPad and like do the Windows connection thing. We'll just X all that out because we're not um, concerned about that. What we will do, however, is just start up the Duet app on the iPad. And this just takes a second. And there we have it. We're now literally got a mirror image of my desktop here. And you can see if I, you know, if I bring the mouse over here, I'm actually, you know, controlling the mouse on this screen. So here we have it. When I'm working, I can just literally set this, you know, right here. And I can have a second display that's really close up and really easy to read. Let me show you what I'm doing with this in Ableton, you guys. Okay, so here we are in Ableton on my Windows desktop, okay? And if we go to the View tab, we'll see right off the jump that there's actually an option for a second window inside of Ableton. And if we click that, and then we minimize the window, we get this second window in Ableton. And this allows us to have the session view uh, and the arrangement view open inside of Ableton at the same time. Now, we can literally just drag this screen onto the second window, which is now the iPad, and I can maximize this screen. And here we have it. We have Ableton Live on two screens. And I've got my mouse on this screen, and I've got you know my mouse on this screen and we're good to go here. Now, what's the benefit of this, right? Well, I use um, the FabFilter Pro-Q plugin um, pretty much like uh, in, on every single track, right? And so I'm constantly opening and closing this uh, plugin. It's constantly, um, you know, a source of, you know, find the track, open the plugin, you know, make some adjustments, um, and then, you know, close it up again. And what I can do here now is I can load this plugin. Let's see, Fab Filter Pro Q. I can load this plugin on my master bus, right? And I can drag this plugin to our second window over here, and I can put that full screen. So at all times, I can have this iPad as a visual representation of the entire, uh, you know, sonic summing of my mix and see if any of the the tracks are jumping out and might need to be um addressed and whatnot okay let me show you what i mean a little bit more specifically we'll get this fired up with some audio so here's a little bit more about what i'm talking about i've got the pro q2 now loaded on the master bus and i've got just a kick drum and a bass track and i'll play that and we'll see that you get a visual represent this is again on the master bus so it's getting the uh representation of all of the channels that are going to be running through the session here so as i'm working now i can just have this window open all the time and as I'm adding tracks and I'm working on things, if something is spiking the mix or whatever, I'm going to see it right away. And I'm going to know, oh, that track needs to be worked on. So this is super, super handy. Now, what you can do is you can also, you know, minimize this. And let's just say um, that you're working, you know, with some VST plugins, right? Let's say you're working with um, a sense like Spire. Go ahead and load that in. 
Okay. And so now, not only can I have, you know, this virtual synth right in front of me, but I can actually, I can actually move these knobs, guys. I'm actually using sort of a touchscreen interface here with Ableton. And this is like a whole, you know, a whole nother... I mean, you know, I spend... A, this is all I do, guys. I'm in here working, you know, 12 to 16 hours a day. This is an amazing time saver for me. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be using the touch interface, but literally... Just to have it, you know, right in front of you. And, you know, I mean, this is this is like a whole, I mean, wow. Um, as my eyes get a little older, I mean, this is really, really something that I'm appreciating at this time. Yeah. And so you can also, you know, any of the plugins that you're working with over in Ableton, you know, you can, um, you can open those up. Let's say, you know, you'd want to just drag that over here. You can come back over here to Ableton. You can open up another plugin. Let's say that, you know, you're working with these, you know, two plugins on, you know, one of your tracks and you're going to be, you know, working with them a lot. You can kind of have them open on the screen in your second window, but you're still able to work in your main window inside of Ableton. And so you can really, depending on your workflow and what plugins you're using, the second window like this is really just like an amazing time saver. And to be able to use an iPad like this where it's not blocking up my desk and it's not taking up a huge space of a monitor, which is also going to be, you know, affecting the sound in this small room, um, you know, as as where things are placed is definitely has an impact on on how the sound gets to your you know ears and what it bounces off of this is a relatively low um you know profile where the sound isn't necessarily going to cause a lot of reflection it's just on the ipad being there you can even have it lower you know and you can prop it up against another piece of gear for me this is like uh, it's been almost a year in this new space without I used to have a three monitor setup in my much larger space but that's just not quite acoustically possible here so this is really really um something that I'm excited about and I really recommend that you guys try if you've got um you know a second iPad or even just you know your main iPad if you're producing on the PC for a while try plugging this in and using it as a second monitor and see if it speeds up your workflow as well guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 